the thrill of travel, wild adventure and big machines on this episode of Mavericks Unlimited. Extreme bodybuilding. This is the world's strongest village. 800 Indian men toughen up their bodies every day for their dream job. The traditional sport is called Akara and demands stamina and an iron discipline from the men. In addition, duty at one of the most remote places of the world. We accompany a team of Brazilian marine doctors to their tough job in the villages on the fringes of the Amazon. And these are probably the world's heaviest shoes. Why this Chinese man ties more than 400 kilos of iron to his feet and hence becomes an attraction. All of this now on Mavericks Unlimited. We begin our journey in Delhi, India. There is a village close to the capital, Asola Fatepur Beri, India's strongest village. In fact, you see six packs and muscles all around. Even though Indians usually tend to be of a rather slender stature, what's going on? It's 6 a.m. While the priest is reciting the morning prayer in the temple of the village, this man is preparing the battle arena for the so-called Akara. Soon the male villagers will gather here to engage in collective sports activities. Every morning, Ronek jogs six kilometers to be part of the Akara. ये मारा खड़ा है और अभी यहाँ पे हम रेसलिंग की ट्रेनिंग करते हैं सारे सब बच्चे अभी एक्सेस भी कर रहे हैं ये हमारे कोच साहब है और ये हमारा फील्ड है हमारे खड़े का और वही सब चीजें अभी स्टार्ट करेंगे वर्कआउट Ronak is one of more than 800 men from Asola who belong to the Akara culture. They are trained by master Vijay Pahelwan. The former professional wrestler is a guru of sorts here. He teaches the villagers the traditional sport of wrestling, which had actually died out in India since the 8th century, the reason for the newly found popularity. रेसलिंग करने के लिए ये प्रॉपर एक्सरसाइज है इससे अच्छा एक्सरसाइज कोई नहीं है डंड मारना पहलवान के लिए मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट है इसको मारना बहुत ही जरूरी होता है अगर तब तक आप रेसलिंग करने और आपको आगे जाना तो डंड मारना बहुत जरूरी होता है विजय किक्ड ऑफ अ ट्रेंड अमंग द बॉयज ऑफ द विलेज एंड हैज बिकम अ रोल मॉडल फॉर एवरीवन एल्स मैं बॉन्सर बनना चाहता हूं मेरे भाई बॉन्सर है इसलिए मैं बॉन्सर बनना चाहता हूं Training for the dream job as a bouncer. Twice a day, seven times a week. In spite of the fitness studio which has opened up recently, most men prefer training in the old-fashioned way of the wrestlers. बच्चे 15-16 साल की उम्र के बाद सारे लड़के हमारे इलाके में रेसलिंग करना शुरू हो जाता है। रस्सा भी करते हैं लड़के रस्सा पहलवानी के लिए बहुत जरूरी होता है। Kushti is the main part of the bouncer training, an old Indian way of wrestling on sand. The aim is to wrestle the opponent to the ground. Our job is for training. Sometimes someone gets hurt in the club. So, we can handle all these things here. We can do physical work. 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 But sometimes, injuries occur even during the training. जी इसी से ही रेसलर की पहचान होती है इनके जो हमारे कान टूट जाते हैं तो इससे रेसलर की पहचान होती है। In addition to the tough training, alcohol, drugs and meat are taboo for the Kushti wrestlers. All the villagers are vegetarian. ये बल्ली पहलवान है, ये बहुत अच्छा पहलवान के साथ साथ बहुत अच्छा बॉन्सर भी है। ये बॉन्सर की जॉब करता है और अपना सारा In order to still build up enough muscle mass for their dream job. Ronek and the others follow a strict diet. In addition to fruit and self-made pita bread called naan, the strong men ingest four liters of dairy products every day. The cow of the house provides the supply. ये हमारी बॉडी के लिए इसमें प्रोटीन डाइ प्रोटीन ज़्यादा है कैल्शियम है और फैट जो गुड फैट है वो बहुत ज़्यादा मात्रा में है अच्छी डाइट है ये हमारे लिए हेल्दी फूड है मतलब हेल्दी है ये दूध एंड दिस इस व्हाट इट लुक्स लाइक द ड्रीम जॉब एन आवर्स कार ड्राइव फ्रॉम द विलेज रोनेक स्टार्ट्स हिस शिफ्ट 
bag search and ID check. Four times a week, the village wrestler is in charge of security at the door. As a bouncer, Ronek earns $870 a month, a very lucrative job for the Indian bodybuilders. The journey takes us from Delhi to the Amazon River in Brazil. We intend to meet a young doctor here. He shares a tiny booth with two of his colleagues 160 days a year. Lucas Ruita Canamori and his colleagues travel the Amazon on an important mission. They are swimming doctors aboard a hospital ship. When I was a child, I liked to treat when I was hurt when I was in the house. I was there with my medical line to try to do a curative and all that. I think that stayed with me, maybe. I grew up with the idea that maybe I would like to be a medical. Lucas and the hospital ship provide health care even in the remotest areas of the Amazon region. In places where diseases like leprosy, yellow fever, and tuberculosis still exist, for many inhabitants, the ship is essential. Their only chance to receive medical treatment. The Brazilian Amazon region. Three million people live in traditional communities along the river, often without electricity and clean water. If someone gets ill, it may take several days by boat to reach the nearest doctor, but there is hope. The Osvaldo Cruz, a military boat on a peaceful mission with only one crew. The crew wants to provide medical care for even the remotest village every two years. Four young doctors, all of them fresh from medical school, take care of their poorest fellow countrymen for a year. Lucas has been traveling with his colleagues for 30 days. He is proud of the results they have achieved so far. Bastante pessoas, a gente está no atendimento como um todo. Uh, pelo menos atendimento médico, a gente fez mais de 2.200 atendimentos médicos. Eu acho que a gente ajudou algumas pessoas. The ship not only takes the doctors to the villages, it's a moving hospital and the inside is more spacious than it looks. Equipped with everything you need for consultation hours in the jungle, a dental surgery suitably decorated for the little ones. And an x-ray room. It even has its own laboratory for blood tests. It's the first time Lucas is treating his patients without supervision from experienced doctors, something that initially worried the 26-year-old. É medo de estar sozinho no atendimento, mas eu fico feliz que tem mais outros três médicos comigo. Daí, quando você tem dúvida, você vai, troca uma ideia, pergunta, a gente consegue discutir os casos bem. O medo maior, eu acho que foi foi esse, de não saber o que fazer com um paciente é, potencialmente grave ou um paciente que não não fazia, faz, fizesse ideia do que, do que que era. The Osvaldo Cruz casts off after sunset. For the rest of the night, Captain Jose Duarte maneuvers the hospital ship along the Rio Tapajos, one of the greatest tributary rivers of the Amazon. They are supposed to reach the community of Cajatuba at dawn. While the crew steers the ship out of the harbor, the team of doctors meet for a debriefing session. All in all, there are four doctors, four dentists, seven nurses, and a pharmacist on board. In the region, the energy electric exists, but they said that it's a weak energy, that if you connect a lot of electronic devices, it falls. But, for example, we can take the balances, which are more precious than the other ones that we took. The signal of the cellular exists. The cell phone is more precious than the other ones that we took. The more devices the doctors can bring along, the easier it is to provide care. The Marine knows the coordinates of the communities from previous expeditions, and they have a rough picture of what's awaiting them. But often the experiences do not match the reality. É, tem, tem vezes que a gente chega na comunidade e é uma coisa completamente daquilo que a gente esperava. Porque as comunidades mudam, é, as comuni tem algumas comunidades que a gente chega e elas mudaram de local por, por questões locais, assim, ah, 
O rio subiu e ela não tinha mais condição de ficar naquele local. Né? Tomorrow, Lucas and the other doctors will find out whether they had prepared themselves appropriately. Sunrise at the Rio Tapajos. While the Osvaldo Cruz is heading for the community, the crew is roused in the old marine tradition. Bom dia, Candiru da Amazônia. A Brazilian classic as a wake-up call. At seven sharp, breakfast is ready. The first and only chance for Lucas and the team of doctors to recharge their batteries for the day, shortly before the start of their mission. Bom atendimento, é que, que a gente não tenha caso muito grave, que a gente não saiba lidar, mas acho que vai ser bom, né? Tá todo mundo animado, eu acho. In the meantime, the Osvaldo Cruz has reached its destination. Because the big ship cannot lay alongside at the riverbank, the doctors have to take a motorboat to reach the shore. For Lucas, this moment is the most exciting. How many people have gathered in the community center? How will they be received by the inhabitants? What kind of cases are awaiting them today? The Brazilian Marine tries to reach every small village along the Amazon at least every two years. The consultation hours are announced by a telephone if possible. It has worked out today. 80 patients are already waiting for the doctors at 8 a.m. Lucas feels relieved. Esse aqui é o modelo mais organizado possível, assim, as pessoas chegaram antecipadamente porque a gente avisou antecipadamente a comunidade, daí eles já se prepararam, é, assim que a gente chegou tinha gente aqui para receber a gente e a comunidade ajudou a gente a montar as mesas, ver o que a gente precisava. Lucas and his colleagues are expecting around 140 patients today, a normal work day. But not every visit is as well organized as this one. Mas presença médica na, naquele, naquela comunidade foram mais de 10 anos de, de ausência, basicamente. Daí quando a gente apareceu também apareceram muitas pessoas. A gente ficou, a gente teve que dobrar o dia. A gente tinha planejado ficar um dia, a gente teve que ficar dois dias pela quantidade de pessoas que compareceram ao atendimento. Intestinal parasites are widespread in the Amazon region. But the doctors also bring along standard medication like antibiotics, painkillers, and vitamin preparations. The order in which the patients are treated is clearly defined. First the elderly, then the pregnant, then the mothers with their children, and then the rest. Meanwhile, the hospital ship has become indispensable for the inhabitants of Cajatuba. Ah, foi muito boa, né? Com certeza. O pessoal ficou até abismado que nunca nunca tinha visto, né? Aí chega assim, o pessoal é mais de quem quem quer aproveitar, né? Muitos ficam até com medo, porque não sabe o que é, né? Aí, mas depois com as, com as informações que é coisa boa, é coisa de saúde, normal, com certeza. Aí quando aparece Two nurses take over the first health check, measuring blood pressure, height, weight, and the level of blood sugar, because diabetes is widespread in the Amazon region. Not only the patients are unfamiliar with the situation, Lucas is too. Para mim foi uma coisa muito diferente, né? Nunca tinha esperado que porque a gente cria expectativas e a gente cria uma imagem que a gente do que, que a gente vai se deparar quando a gente chega na comunidade. E foi um pouco diferente do que eu imaginava, foi um pouco mais quente do que eu imaginava que ia ser. E mais o contato com as pessoas, eu pensava que ia ser mais difícil. 10 months ago, Eliana gave birth to her daughter. Today, the first post-birth examination is awaiting the two of them. Lucas is trying to take as much time as possible for each of his patients, knowing their next examination will be in two years' time. O que acontece com você, Eliane? 
problema no coração. Né? Problema no coração. Que, que problema no coração que você está sentindo? E começou a sentir o quê? Pressão, pressão alta. Tá. Começou a ter pressão alta do nada, é isso? Foi. Eliana's father had been diagnosed with high blood pressure some time ago. Since giving birth to her daughter, Eliana also has problems. Now she is not only worried about her heart, but also the well-being of her child. O coraçãozinho dela é bem, é bem fortinho também. Eliana has to undergo a series of further tests. Her blood sample must be analyzed in the ship's laboratory, and she is given an appointment aboard the hospital ship for a heart scan. Eu achei, achei muito bom, né? Você estarem aqui, né? Que a gente não esperava. Foi uma coisa boa fazer esses exames, né? Não tem por aqui é difícil. The hospital ship's crew not only examines the patients, preventing illnesses is just as important. While the doctors conduct their consultation hours, the nurses visit the village school. The children need to learn from early on how to protect themselves from infections. Pois é, a nossa maior missão é a prevenção, né? A gente sabe que o maior custo de tratamento é quando se assume já a doença. Então, para a gente é mais dispendioso tratar quando o mal já está instalado. A ação preventiva, ainda mais com, com o público infantil, tem surtido assim ao longo do tempo bons, bons efeitos. The reason why the nurses teach the children hygiene is simple. They will tell their parents and grandparents about the great things they learned. That's the way the entire village is informed. First of all, the nurses break the ice in a playful way and hand out prizes to the winner, a toothbrush set. And then it begins. Often the nurses have to show the inhabitants even basic things, like how to wash their hands and brush their teeth and hope that the people along the Amazon River turn it into a routine for themselves. Back to the hospital ship. Not only does the Osvaldo Cruz take doctors to their patients along the river, it's also a floating clinic. As opposed to most of the communities, the military ship offers a constant power supply. In Eliana's case, the doctors can unhurriedly examine her heart. Other interventions can also be carried out aboard the Osvaldo Cruz. Many patients are waiting for dental treatment on the ship. Toothaches are often a tedious problem along the Amazon because it may take two years before the next dentist stops by. In the operating room, the young mother Eliana finally has her heart scan done. The doctors hope that an ECG will help determine where her troubles originate. Sim, a gente faz normalmente todo dia que tem atendimento faz uma média de três a quatro é, eletros por atendimento, assim, por dia de atendimento. In a moment, Eliana will find out whether her heart is healthy. Additionally, the doctors are having her blood checked in the ship's laboratory. In the midst of the Amazon region. The Brazilian Marine crew can carry out all the important tests they would carry out in a hospital too. Pronto, é só isso. Só vou tirar aqui os eletrodos da senhora. Vou lhe dar o resultado e a senhora volta para o mesmo médico que te atendeu. Back in the community, Lucas once again checks Eliana's heart. Her husband has left work early to find out how she is. But Lucas doesn't find anything unexceptional. All the results are fine. Eliana returns home feeling relieved. Poxa, me senti bem em saber que não deu nada, mas nem o coração tá tudo normal. All in all, the inhabitants of Cajatuba were in a good state of health today. The biggest problems were pains and digestive troubles. Eu acho que eu O que a gente pode fazer de melhor aqui realmente é a orientação dos pacientes. É, eles vêm para cá 
para a gente assim, com muitas dúvidas, eles têm muita dificuldade de, é, de obter informações pela dificuldade só da região. Então, é, aqui o que a gente pode fazer é trazer informação para eles. Eu acho que é a parte mais importante do que a gente faz. After eight hours of work, the doctors have finished their shift. They have completed their mission because once again, they have successfully treated all of the patients of the community today. We continue on to central China, to Changsha to be precise. This metropolis is said to offer a special feature. We find children performing in the streets of the city and encounter Kung Fu masters. But that's not what we're here for, because we're here to meet a very special man. Particularly large numbers of people gather around him. A man who is trying to jump over chains in giant stilt shoes. That looks very crazy. What exactly is it about? Oh, you have to go China now. So they are made of iron. Zhang Zhangwei has been training with these kind of shoes for more than 20 years. He supplements his meager pension with performances like this. We want to learn more about his shoes. Yang invites us to his house. We accompany the man on a bike to find out more about his remarkable hobby. Will the rickety bike survive this? <laughs> <laughs> a broken bike is no problem for us. We continue the ride in a car. Let's hope the car can carry the weight of the boots. Luckily, the car survives the three kilometer ride to Chang's house. The easy part lies behind us now. Chang carries the shoes into the house to put them on a scale. A single shoe weighs more than 150 kilos. Chang is concerned about his precious shoes and he chains them up so that no one can run off in them. Crazy. But that's not crazy enough. We drive on to Tangshan. This is where the man who supposedly manufactures the world's heaviest shoes lives, in this factory building. We happily believe it. Businessman Chang Fuxing shows us the separate steps of production. Not bad for a three man business. Apart from the weights, Chang Fuxing makes everything himself. The weights can be screwed together, depending on how much weight you can carry. But why do people wear iron shoes anyway? Cheng Fuxing takes us along to his rheumatism support group. The patients wear these shoes for therapeutical reasons. Three times a week, they meet up to do a workout. Wearing iron shoes is supposed to cure rheumatism, back problems, and hemorrhoids. There is no scientific proof for the effectiveness of this treatment, but everyone agrees it helps, and that's the main thing. Maybe it's because of the exercise and the fresh air. These patients look relatively healthy. Their iron shoes only weigh a few kilos. They can easily move around in them. But then,
Zhang Fuxing shows us something very special, his masterpiece, probably the heaviest shoes on earth. It takes four men to lift one shoe onto the scale. One shoe weighs an incredible 203 kilos. A pair of them is almost as heavy as a young bull. Originally manufactured for marketing purposes, these shoes have become his favorite pair. Perhaps because they make the 1.69 meter tall man grow to 2.10 meters, attracting disbelieving stares. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible! Zhang Fuxing actually manages to set himself in motion in these 400 kilo heavy iron shoes. The true Iron Man comes from China. Mavericks Unlimited.